come out of somebody's yeah, I mouth. I forgot about that. <laughs> It'll come out of somebody's mouth. And before you know it, you're there. Let there be light. I'm going to share the testimony about um, Isaac and the baby. Oh, you just want to brag because the baby was named <laughs> after you. Man, I can't believe you're going to be a Lord. Put her flesh down. <laughs> that, that's amazing. <laughs> All the way from Ghana. That's something. Oh man. Yeah, they're in the same city as uh, Miss Novera. Yeah, they are. So have, they, have you meant, have, Has she mentioned anything to you about community? Yeah, she's going to. She's getting a hold of Mr. Solomon, and Mr. Solomon will contact him. Okay. Because they're proper for a woman to, to contact a man over there. Okay. It it looks a little. Uh, okay. And uh, so Mr. Solomon is going to do that. He's going to get a hold of him, and, and they're going to get together. In fact, even on the books and stuff like that, they want to see if he wants to go ahead and, and do any collaboration as far as that goes back and forth. And it's good to have a church in the same area that they can. That they well, can he kind of watches do. us on Facebook, and he said that. Um, he went on YouTube too, because he didn't know he was on YouTube, yeah. and I told him. Uh, and he said that he was um, sharing. Yeah. Sharing. And I said, well, good, share it with, yeah. with, your, with your, your family, with the people that you minister to. The more the word gets out there, the better, better it The more the word gets out there, the better it is, woman of God. <laughs> So woman it, of God. Don't take it personally, even if it is personal. <laughs> woman of God. <laughs> Did you know you're a woman of God? Yeah. She doesn't. Repeat. I didn't hear that. She doesn't repeat herself often. I didn't hear that. Yes. No. Huh? Understatement. Did you say it? <laughs> did I, did I, what did you say? I say yes. I, I still didn't hear it. I said yes. Yes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll pray for her hearing too, if I were here. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Hallelujah is right. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I've had a good time with the Lord this morning. I'm telling you, listening to the music. Mm -hmm. Woo! What a mighty God we serve. Holy, holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Had a good time this morning. I've cried and I've prayed and I've run around here. If y'all walked in and see me run in the house, you'd probably think I was crazy. Yeah. But that's okay. I don't care. Yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty much huh? we're there. We're there. Are you there too? <laughs> <laughs> we understand that. Are we on? For the last three minutes. Okay. Good deal. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I got caught too much. Oh, I got a new name in the basket too, and I'm gonna share how that name come about. Oh, okay. I got it. Uh, he he works at uh, Mama June's. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. I got a testimony. I'm telling you something. You know what? God is so good that it ain't always planned like you plan. Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes when you don't want to do certain things, but you go ahead and do it, then you understand why you go ahead and do it. Boy, I tell you what, I had a good time mm -hmm. at Mama June's Thursday. Uh -huh. You know what I, how I felt about that. Mm -hmm. But it was planned. God ordained that day. Whew. Man, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share that. It's powerful. Amen. You never know. You never you never know who God has got set aside for you to encourage and minister. You don't have to know who they are. You've never seen them before in your life. But he does it. He does it. What? Your life. Huh? Your life. Well, are we live? Yes. No, we're not live yet. For the last four minutes. Oh, you, already asked about, you already asked about that. I didn't know. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't know we was live. I'm just having a good time up here sharing about Jesus. <laughs> Lord, I love him yes, so Lord. much. I love him. I love him. I love him. We want to welcome you to the ministry of Jesus Christ through Trinity Kingdom Connection. Amen. We're not a church. I want everybody out there to know this is not a church. We're a body of, of believers that 
want to learn more about Jesus and what He has done for us and how much He loves us and the sacrifice that He made. And uh, that's exactly what Trinity Kingdom Connection is all about. Amen. And I'm going to ask Rabbi Rock, man of God, man of God, come up here and open with prayer. Father, Father, Father. Father, we want to thank you first of all for your presence here. Mm -hmm. We want to thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for the gift of salvation. Hallelujah. We want to thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus Christ going to the cross for us. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for his death, burial, and resurrection, yes. Lord God. Hallelujah. And the anointing and the appointing that he's put on every child of God. Hallelujah. I want to thank you, Father God, personally. I want to thank you that it was your plan that send your son here. Oh my that God. the world might he be saved. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you and praise you for that right now. Mm -hmm. Father, that's the whole reason why we're here is to glorify you. We're not here to glorify ourselves or to tell our story. We're here to tell your story. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not our testimony. It's your testimony in us, oh God. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you and praise you for that. I ask you to bless everybody here today, Father God, in the name of our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. I ask you, Father, that you begin to grow up in us, Father, even more than you've already done. Amen. Begin to give us revelation, to give us, to give us inspiration, yes, oh God. God, hallelujah, that believe it or not turns into perspiration mm -hmm. because faith without works is dead. Father, I thank you that, Father, you'll give us an inspiration that causes us to go mm -hmm. and act for you. To go and do those things you told us that we, not only that we could do, but that we should, we should do. do. Hallelujah. Amen. I and I want to thank side. you for that, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Father, I want to thank you right now, Father, for the ministry, the outgoing ministry of, of Trinity Kingdom Connection. Yes, and this is the ministry of Jesus Christ through Trinity yes, Kingdom Connection. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That we're reaching the world for Jesus Christ. We're reaching the world with his testimony yes. in us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We want to thank you, Father God, that you wrote the Word of God specifically for us, that we might take the blessings of God and carry them through the whole world. Hallelujah. You took those things that were uh, the you, ordinances, Jesus. Father, that were against us. Father, you nailed them to the tree in Christ yes, Jesus. You, you took care of those things, those curses that were against us, Father God. What you did is you gave us blessings and you gave us anointings and appointings. You gave us the possibility, if we'll just say, yes, Lord, I'll go. Mm -hmm. You gave us the possibility of achieving far more than we can ask or think. Mm -hmm. Take us outside of ourselves, Father. Yes, Father. Take us outside yes. of ourselves to the power of the yes. Holy Spirit. Because only when we get outside of ourselves is the Holy Spirit allowed to express Thank you, himself. Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And I'm going to stop with it right there. Hallelujah. 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 I had... Two blessings to be bestowed on me this week. One of them was from a young man named Isaac, and he's from Ghana. And I call him my spiritual son, <laughs> adopted son. And I didn't know all of this, but I found out that he has just recently became become a father. <clears throat> And he, he sent me pictures of him and his wife and that beautiful baby. Amen. Amen. And he made a comment to me that he was going to name his baby after me. And it brought tears to my eyes. I got a baby. I'm a grandma again in Ghana. I love you, Isaac, and your family. Give that baby a kiss for me. That's, that's just a... That is a blessing. Did you hear me? That's a blessing. That makes me... That makes, that makes me know that people overseas are hearing what is Amen. going on here Amen. in this little South Georgia town, Lake Park, Georgia, Amen. Valdosta, Georgia, because we're sharing about Jesus. And, I, and, I, and, and we love you all. We pray for you. We bless you. We know that you're struggling. We know you're going through a lot of situations in your ministry. But remember this. God will provide. He's called you into a ministry, and if he's called you into that ministry, he's going to provide one way or the other. So don't get disappointed. Don't get discouraged. Just keep on believing and doing what God has called you to do. Yes, man. And watch him work that miracle <coughs> out. If he did it for the for those in the wilderness, the 40 years there was there, he fed them, he clothed them. They, they didn't want for nothing. 
And he'll do the same for you. Hallelujah. We love you, Isaac, and thank you for the honor and the blessing of being called grandmother. Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Lord of mercy. And and I had had an invitation given to me last Thursday to celebrate my birthday. My birthday was October the 13th, but we she, we couldn't celebrate this until Thursday. And I was invited to um, Mama June's for lunch, and I went, and <clears throat> we were sitting there talking and fellowshipping and just had a real good time talking with my spiritual daughter, Patrish. And uh, after about probably an hour, I guess, uh, it, we got ready to go, and I got up. You never know how God is going to use you, so always be ready and be prepared. Always, sister, daughter, be ready and be prepared. Never know how God's going to use you. And I got up, and we started to leave, and there was six ladies sitting around a table, and my eyes just focused on them, especially one. Never seen them before in my life. I would know her if I saw her again, but I'd never seen her before. And as I walked, I started to walk out, the Lord had me to go over and put my hand on this precious lady and embrace her and say, let me tell you something, sweetheart. God said to tell you He loves you and He's got a plan for your life. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, it shocked all the ladies that were sitting around the table. Their eyes got big as saucers and then He began to reveal some things to me to share with her. Uh, and one of them got up and come hug me. And and we, we probably was about 15 or 20 minutes ministering at that table. And it stopped a young man named James. And it stopped one of the waitresses. And they just was watching and listening to what was going on. And come to find out, which I didn't know this until after the, after it, the meeting was over. But God was sharing with me to share with her what we talk about all the time about the Lord's Supper and about the beating that He took on His body for our healing. Yes. We don't grasp that. And I don't know that if they've ever heard that before or not. But that's one of the things that I had to share with this young woman. I said, I don't know you, but I said, I want to tell you this. That my Bible says and God's Word says that by the beating that He took on His body, you're healed. Amen. And I began to share some more things with her and, and tears started streaming down her face and she just got up and hugged on me. I still didn't know what was going on. But it was ministry to her. And you don't have to know what a person's going through. You just obey the Lord and do Amen. what God's told you to do. And I promise you, it'll work. They'll never forget that meeting there uh, Thursday at, at, these, at the restaurant. And when we got out there to get in the car, uh, my friend said to me that she had just been diagnosed <clears throat> with a, a terrible disease that could eventually take her life. I didn't know that. But God knew that, and God knew that she needed to be encouraged. And I told her, I said, you go read Psalms 22 and read about what the suffering that Jesus took on his body for, for your healing, for our healing, but still didn't know that what was going on. And, and I'm telling you something, that thing just blessed me because we never know, we, we should never second guess when God tells you to do something to go do it. There's a reason for it. Somebody needs to hear the word and, and the, the, um, uh, the love that, that God has for all of His people. Come on. We have to do that. Amen. That's what we're here for. We're not here to pat ourselves on the back. We're not here to be called certain things. We're here to share the love of Jesus and what He has done. And that's what Trinity is all about. And I, I thank God, and I won't, if they're listening, I gave them my number and uh, told them we was on Facebook, and if you guys are listening, we want you to know that we love you and we're praying for you. Uh, we're located at 3847 Sportsman's Cove Road, Lake Park, Georgia, and y'all are welcome to come anytime you want to. But we're praying for you, and, and it's, I've just had a good time this week. Amen. Amen. I really have. God has just really, it's just been amazing. 
uh, what the Lord has done this week and how He has used me and how He wants to use all of us. Yes. Amen. 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 You gonna share your revelation? Yeah. Um, come on. Come on, baby. You. Patricia's got a, a a word that God has revealed to her, and she wants to share it with the world. So I want y'all to listen. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to say that you know. <laughs> Well, sometime this week I was taking communion and I was, as I sat there and uh, I, as I usually do, I would pray before and, you know, forgive everyone and all that, then take it. Then I realized that the Lord was um, just saying to me after a while that, um, you know, about discerning the body, you know. And, Can you uh, hear? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Discerning the body of Christ. So I was thinking uh, to myself, you know, uh, because I always, you know, try, you know, forgive everyone and all that. He is like saying, I guess, reminding us of, um, of forgiving others, you know, while we're there, you know, uh, about to take, before we take our communion. So those were thoughts that were coming to me and... I know I usually do that, but it was like a reminder. Mm -hmm. Like um, I need to share it with others to remind them to forgive others, forgive others to to you know who has been you know who have been mean to them, who have been unkind, mm -hmm. the stuff to them that you know you would normally you know expect people to do to you, and you still are holding it, you know, holding that as unforgiveness. And not realizing that you're holding it as unforgiveness. Wow. And while I was sitting there, another thought that came was Joseph. Um, uh, the thought of Joseph and his brothers when he um, told them about his dream, and you know they all disliked him and everything. And you know he, they tried to kill him, you know, harm him in a negative way, and. Uh, you know, they, he was sold into, you know, Egypt and uh, he was there with Pharaoh and he went through a lot of things. He went through a lot of really, you know, hurtful things. And he was a young boy, you know, he's a, you know he was a teenager when he went through all of that. And when his, he finally met his brothers again, he could have been mean to them because he was at a level, in a position where he could have been really unkind. He could have held them, you know, because of the unkind things that they had done to him. But as I thought through it, I realized that he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He was, you know, it was still hurting on the inside of him because he really broke down and cried. Amen. But he was really kind to them. Mm -hmm. You know, he ended up being really kind to them. So it's like he was saying, you know, to us to, you know, when people hurt us or do stuff to us and we really want to be mean, Bless those who curse us, That's right. you know, yes, bless those who are unkind to us. And that was pretty much the revelation I was getting, um, you know, regarding, you know, us taking the time out before we were taking our communion to forgive others and to really, you know, go back into our minds sometime and think about the things that, you know, we have done ourselves and the things that others have done to us and that Jesus paid a price for us. He has forgiven us and set us free from all our sin and sickness and disease and all that. And we are supposed to do likewise. You know, forgive others. You know, and not hold them, not hold things against them that they have done to us. So, I just want to remind you just Praise to God. forgive others. Amen. You know, Praise and, God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hey, Mama. Hmm? Isaac uh, has a prayer request that we pray for his newborn baby girl uh, that he wants God to use her. He what? He wants God to use her. God's going to use her. Isaac, God's going to use her because of who you are and what you impart into her about, about God. And yes, we will be praying. We pray. In fact, I pray for you in the morning and I pray for you at night. <clears throat> but you will be in our prayers and that baby will be in our prayers as well. God bless you, Isaac. I enjoyed that because this is something that the Lord 
was dealing with me on about and for me to share before we do our Lord's Supper um, about how we are supposed to not do this until we make sure that we've got our spirits and our hearts and our minds clear that we've forgiven everybody that's created harm for us is something we're supposed to do because Jesus looked out amongst all the people that were down there at, at, the, at the foot of the cross and he's up there un, unrecognizable and I shared this with somebody this past week and he looked out amongst all these people and them knowing what he had done the miracles that he had wrought the healing that he had, de had done deliverance that he had done the love that he had shown even to the children but they're all looking at him and, and they're wondering well if you're who you say you are why don't you come off that cross well they didn't realize that there was an assignment on Jesus' life that, that he and his daddy discussed before he was ever placed in his mama's womb did y'all hear what I said you and God have had a conversation in Genesis 1. Go read it. It's different than Genesis 2. Right. Everybody listening on this broadcast has had a conversation with God. God has communicated with you, and He has told you what His plan was for your life. You either accepted it or you rejected it. And he knows who's accepted and he knows who's rejected. And if you've accepted, even though you've done things you don't have any business doing, God is still dealing with you to bring you into the place where he wants you to be. Yes. He dealt he did that with me. He did it with he did it with everybody, everybody Amen. on the face of the earth. He looked down there at all those folks that was making fun of him, knowing that he was very special knowing that he was a man of miracles and he said father forgive them for they don't know what they're doing now he's unrecognizable but he's praying for everybody that's cursing him and how come we can't do that why we got to get angry and and argue with somebody that's made us angry and, and speak uh, ugly stuff toward them instead of coming here or, or getting on your knees wherever you are and asking God to forgive you for the anger that you got in your heart toward that person and start praying for that person because God allowed all of that to happen. Number one, to show you what is in you that He wants you to change. Not only that, but to pray for the person because we're prayer warriors. Uh, I was sitting in my prayer time this morning and there was a particular person that came to my mind and I could feel the anger rise up and I rebuked it in the name of Jesus and I had to start praying for that particular person. Because apparently, I don't know this, but maybe there's nobody else out there that cares enough about that person to pray for them. Come on. So it, we all have an assignment. Every one of us has an assignment to do on this earth before we go to meet our Father. And, and we need to get rid of the anger and the resentment and the unforgiveness and all of this needs to be done before you ever partake into in the Lord's Supper because if you don't, you're asking for some major trouble. Uh, in studying and in reading, and, and y'all hear me say this quite a bit, the Lord's Supper is very, very important. And, and you don't have to have a pastor or a preacher or a church or a denomination or whoever to tell you when to do it because our body is the home of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. And whenever we hear the voice of God and He says, Go do, then you don't have to call a, a somebody and say, Is it okay if I do this? When God tells you to go do it, go do it. And I and I and I've learned in in the in the doing of the Lord's Supper. I never really knew this. Uh, I used to call it communion, but God told me to stop that and start calling it the Lord's Supper because that's exactly what Jesus called it whenever he was having supper with his disciples uh, 
on the day that uh, of Passover, when they were celebrating the feast of Passover, on the day that he knew he was going to be crucified. Now, can you imagine sitting at the table with a man that you know that's going to give you a kiss to betray you, and another man that you know that's going to deny you three times, and then the rest of them are just going to say, well, he must not have been what he was supposed to, what he said he was, and they just go back fishing. And God knew all of this. Jesus knew all of this. But what did he do? He humbled himself as a servant of Almighty God. He washed the feet of every one of those at that table, including the man that betrayed him. Yes. Now that's amazing. Can we not see the love that Jesus Christ had? And what's so amazing and y'all hear me talk about this quite a bit, is not only that, Him, Abba, God, the Father, and God the Son had that conversation, and He knew what His destiny was when He came into this world. He knew why He was sent into this world. He knew what He was going to go through. He knew the sacrifice He was going to have to deal with. But whenever they did the Lord's Supper, and it's like the precious woman of God just got through saying, before you do it, you need to get down on your face, on your knees. You need to be honest with God. If you've got hatred or unforgiveness or resentment or lying or stealing or cheating or homicide, whatever it is in your life, you need to repent. You don't need to do the Lord's Supper and still go out and do the same thing because it's going to bring damnation to you. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, God's a God of love and God is, is He's real. You need to repent. You need to be honest with God before you do the Lord's Supper. And that's what we're about to do. We're about to do the Lord's Supper. But I want to read something to you before I do. And it's in 1 Peter, uh, the second chapter. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for wrongdoing and you endure it. Now listen to this. But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in His mouth. That's our Jesus. That's our Amen. Yeshua. Oh, yeah, my son. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. When you do this, God will defend you no matter what. When you don't judge others, when you don't complain about others, when you don't curse others, when you give it all over to God and you're honest with God, God will defend you. He Himself bore our sins. Who is He? Jesus, Yeshua Himself, bore our sins in His body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness for by his wounds you have been healed. And how many times y'all heard me say I don't like the word stripes? Yes. I don't like the word stripes. By his wounds. By his wounds. You know what? This is nothing compared to what they beat Jesus with. Nothing compared. And in the end of it, it had the metal and, and the stones in it. And whenever the man behind it hated his guts and they hit him, it didn't make no difference if it went into his eye and pulled his eyeballs out. It didn't matter. He just hated him. He said, by the wounds, by my wounds, you're healed. Why do you walk around complaining about sickness whenever he said, by my wounds, you're healed. We need to believe what the Word says and apply it to our life and quit speaking the opposite. Hallelujah. By His wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseer 
of our souls, of your souls. That's the kind of God, that's the kind of Jesus that we that we know. That's the kind of Jesus that we deal with. And so we're going to do the Lord's Supper this morning. And Tristan, if you want to, you can share it. You can deliver it right here. We're going to do the Lord's Supper in Lord's Supper in memory of what He has done for us so many thousands of years ago. This is something that the Lord told me that we needed to do every. Every, every Saturday when we have service is to be in remembrance of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you and for this world. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I'll hold up this bread. When you hold it up to the light, you can see the wounds. You can see the holes in the bread which which represents the, the wounds, the, the piercing of his body, and the brown marks that represents the, the the brown marks that represents the beating he took on his body. And God gave me revelation. I had been doing it but never breaking the bread. But he said whenever he was with his disciples, whenever they were celebrating Passover, he held this bread up and he broke it and he said, This is my body. That was broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of what I've done for you. And I learned something about the breaking of the bread. That there was two young men that was walking the streets and they was talking to one another about the, the, the death of Jesus. And they didn't realize that there was a stranger that walked up to them and said, What are y'all talking about? And he told them. They didn't know that that was Jesus. And they had a conversation, and whenever the conversation was over, Jesus started to leave. The man that they didn't know was Jesus. And he, they said, oh, no, 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 don't, don't leave, don't leave, stay with us, stay with us. And he stayed with them. And so it says that while he was at the table, while Jesus was at the table with them, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it. Jesus broke it. Yes. And began to give it to them. And as soon as they broke the bread, revelation came. Come on. Their eyes were open and they recognized who he was with the breaking of the bread. Yes, and I never understood it. I ain't never heard that preached. But I tell you what, God said you break the bread and I'll give you revelation. And so the Lord, we just lift this up to you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the revelation of your word. We love you and we are we're taking partaking of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm. Mm. And Father, we lift up this juice into your presence. That represents the precious blood that your son Yeshua shed. When they pulled that beard off his face. When they beat a crown of thorns into his skull. When they took their fist and they beat him in his face. And they said prophesy who hit you. Prophesy who hit you. When they nailed his hands and his feet to that cross. He became the final, final sacrifice for the sins of the world. And when you commit a sin, all you have to do is, is, is go to God and repent and mean it in your heart. And because of the, of the sacrifice that Yeshua said, He took every sin that was in this world on His body. He became the sin. He became the final sacrifice. Yes, yes. And Father, we thank You for the love and, and that Yeshua has shed, that he, Yeshua showed us so many thousands of years ago. When he was nailed to the cross and became our final sacrifice. We bless this and we thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you baby.
My words to whoever's listening out there on Facebook is this. Know that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Son of God, loves you so much that he was willing to go to a horrible cross, take every kind of sickness that you can ever imagine on his body so we don't have to walk around and, and, and prophesy that we've got an illness in our body. And he took every sin that you can ever imagine, every sin that you've ever committed, he has taken that on his body. And you don't have to allow your emotions or your flesh to ridicule you or to make you feel like you're not worthy because Jesus done suffered that. And what, whenever that, those thoughts come and, and the guilt comes, you just need to open your mouth and you need to send that a uh, guilt and, the, and, 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 and that uh, a aggravation into the abyss because Jesus has already suffered it. What a mighty, mighty God that we serve that he would send his son into this world to be a sacrifice for our healing and a sacrifice for every sin that you can ever imagine. And all we have to do is to believe him and trust him and apply that word to our lives. And I promise you, you'll start walking in freedom and the peace that you have never felt before in your entire life. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Yeshua, for your sacrifice. I'm going to turn this over to Rock. I know that he's got revelation for us this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God bless y'all for watching. Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. so much. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to be in the communion of saints. Hallelujah. And that's the proper use of the word communion. We are in a community. And that's what communion is all about. Hallelujah. Well, you know, the theme today has been this. Speak the Word of God. The Word is in your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So choose life. And this is what I've heard this morning about the Word of God is don't hold it back, but rather speak it out. And one of the things that happened to me this week, because we've had an uh, incredible week here, as apparently everybody has. <laughs> so we've had some good things happen this week. We've had babies being named after us, and we've had folks, Ooh, that, hallelujah. folks that had sickness and disease had got the word of encouragement from the Lord. So now I just want to say something about that. What if she had been timid about doing that? Please, Mom, why are you saying that? What if she had said, well, maybe, maybe, oh, God, I don't need to do that. Maybe I need to wait. I don't know what he's talking about. See, we want to be ready in season and out. We want to be ready even when we don't feel ready. Because strikes. We want to be ready even when we say we're not ready. It doesn't matter what we say. It really doesn't matter what we feel. But wounds. It matters what he has called us to do. But I want to tell you, if you'll override the feelings, guess what? The feelings will take off. The feeling said, well, let me get out of the way. Because she's resisting us. He's resisting us. They're resisting us. And you know what? A lot of times the feelings are motivated by the devil. And the end result is he didn't want you to do it. He does not want you to do it. But I'm going to tell you this week I was talking to a lady up in Atlanta. I'm a and, she, and she was uh, <laughs> she was having a situation with uh, pain in her body. And I said, well, why don't you just take, take authority over it? And she goes, oh, I know all that, I know all that. I said, well, <laughs> I said, you know all that? Then why don't you do all that? Uh, Go ahead. We was asked on Facebook, I said, I don't like the word stripes. Yeah. I'd rather say wounds. Yeah. And he wanted to understand why the difference right. in the stripes and the wounds. Will you explain that? Do you want to explain it? No, I mean, you do. It? All right. Well, there's things about stripes. Now, stripes are very transitory. Stripes are something like you get marks on your skin. At the strike. The end result is a wound is something that goes much, much deeper. That's right. In fact, I don't like either one of the words to tell you the truth. Right. Because he was beaten. He was beaten. He was pierced. Yes, he was. You know, he was, I mean, this was a man who was tortured. 
Because when we use the word torture, there was something that actually happened to Jesus Christ, to Yeshua HaMashiach, for our sake. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son and said, Son, I love you enough to send you to the cross for their sake. Do you love them enough? Mm -hmm. But that's the difference. The difference, you know what, I, I, it reminds me of, I'm going to use an old joke here. Chicken and a pig were both, both invited to breakfast. And the chicken said, oh, well, let me, let me go ahead and, and give you a couple of eggs. And they all looked at the pig and said, what are you going to give? <laughs> What's the difference in the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. When the sacrifice doesn't cost you anything, then guess what? It ain't much of a sacrifice. But when the sacrifice costs you your very own life, guess what? How much meaning does that carry? It means everything. So Jesus Christ didn't just come to give us a little until it turns red. That's right. He gave us to give he came to give us his life and give it joyfully. Where's it at? Joyfully. Why did he give it joyfully? Simply because he knew that while he was doing this, many brethren would be made perfect as they believed on him and on his blood sacrifice, that they would become the children of God. That's why he could be joyful. That's why he had to give all of it. Because, you know what, let me say this. He didn't have to die in order for you to be healed. People were being healed all around him. Mm -hmm. All they had to do was come and touch the hem of his garment. That's right. And they were being healed. Were people getting the Holy Spirit? Wasn't he breathing the Holy Spirit on the apostles? So he didn't need to die for that. But what had to happen is, without the remission, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of Same. sin. So they could never enter into the most holy place, which is the very presence of God. This is why God had to send his son, that we might enter in to see our father, Abba, face to face. Amen. And that's why a stripe will never do it. It's got to be a commitment. It's got to be all or nothing at all. And that's one of the things that we've heard today, and I want to talk about themes, because we have a theme here today. It's a theme about sharing the Word of God, Amen. even when you don't feel like it. That's right. We know Jesus didn't feel like going to the cross, because He said, Father, is, is, there, there, no is, is there any other way? Let this cup pass from me. Look, Lord, I, I don't want to give it all. I, that, that's the humanity of Christ. Right. You think that Christ just walked up there and said, Well, I know I'm God, I'm good. No, he was not that confident because we know that it was such a tra tremendous trauma on him mm -hmm. that he was crying and shedding blood out of his body. Yes, he was because of the, pe the fear. Did, he, did you not think that he that he felt Absolutely. fear? Absolutely. That he felt trauma. That he felt worried about this. Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I don't feel good about this. Why? Because remember who you're talking about. You're talking about someone who had no problem seeing into the future. He had no problem seeing what was going to happen shortly, just before his, or he was in the garden. He could see everything that was going to happen on the cross. Even if he couldn't see it prophetically speaking, all he had to do was open the Word of God and go to Psalms 22. That's, right. That's going to happen to me, Lord? Yes. That's going to happen my to me? God, my God. Mm. If this had David on his face, what do you think it did to Jesus? This is how important it is when we pray for our families. I think I want to tell you how important it is to pray for your family. Hallelujah. Because as a priest of the house, priest of the household, God has given you an anointing and he has appointed you as the strong man of the house. And whenever you feel weak and not up to the task, you've got an advocate with the Father. I'm telling you, you go right to the throne of God. Hallelujah. So never feel timid about it. Never feel worried about it. Never feel that you're not enough because it's not you. That's Hallelujah! Right. It's him. It's not our. It's not the te our testimony. It's the testimony of Jesus Christ in us. Yes. It's the testimony of Jesus Christ in pastor. It's the testimony of Jesus Christ in the congregation. It's the testimony of Jesus Christ in your daughter. It's the testimony of Jesus Christ in your family. It's the testimony of Jesus Christ in you. But I'm going to tell you, it's never going to get to them in the fullness that God wants it unless you act. My you have to act in faith. You're the one that has to do it in faith. We're the ones that have to do it in faith for our families. I want to tell you this will lead me right into what the Lord spoke to me about earlier. Talking about Joseph. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, the woman hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> Come on now. Praise God. <laughs> oh, I don't want to say this. Why not? Uh -huh. I'm telling you, you hit the nail right on the head. If 
if I had a bigger hammer, I'd need a smaller nail. Everybody in agreement. Boom! Because I'm going to tell you, just, just drive it right in one shot. What if Joseph didn't pray for his family? That's right. What if he'd have held a grudge? Mm -hmm. What if he decided, well, I'm, I'm second in command here. Mm -hmm. I ain't got time for these guys. Mm -hmm. I ain't got time to mess around with their little, whatever their little things are. Mm -hmm. Say hi to dad for me. That's how people are today. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and give them a position. In the church, out of the church, it don't matter. When their family comes to see them, oh, well, I'll get to you when I can. <laughs> here, come and kiss my ring. Wow. That's how some of you act, too, and you know who you are. Are you offended by what I just said? Good, because then you're the one I'm talking about. Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you I now. Let's it. call it. I ain't making you feel bad. Your guilt is. Is he okay? Your guilt is. Hallelujah. Come on. The end result is when Joseph did what God called him to do, even though he was persecuted for the very calling that he was called to. That's right. You know what I think about persecution on a calling pastor? You know anything about persecution? Okay. Anybody ever persecute you for the calling that God put on your life? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. People will persecute you when they find out you have a calling on your life. They'll get jealous. Mm -hmm. They'll get hateful. They'll get, well, I don't know. They'll recall everything you ever did wrong. Amen. I mean everything. Amen. And so I'm going to be a lie. Mm -hmm. But they'll treat it just like it's true. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you. I can go back, and now this I'll talk on myself here just a little bit. I can go back to places up north. I won't tell you exactly where I went. Oh, uh, yeah, well, Detroit, <laughs> New York, places like that. Things I did 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. People still talk about it. Wow. What are you still talking about? Did your life not go on from 40 years ago? But people still remember things I did 40 years ago because in their minds, they're like, did you remember what he did? I'm telling you, you, know, you want to leave that guy alone. But look what Jesus did. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the end result is, and I like what Pastor just said, look what Jesus did. That's right. He's the great overcomer. Yes, he is. He overcame who I was and changed me who, who I am today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not the man I was, and neither you shouldn't be the man or the Amen. woman you were. Amen. And if you still are, you need to go to the mirror, you need to go to the Word, and you need to find out why you still are. That's right. If you're still backbiting, if you're still talking about folks, if you're still, as soon as they leave the room, then there's something going on. And it ain't Jesus. It's time for us to go ahead. Every time we go ahead and we take the or God now, every time we take the elements for the Lord's Supper, the Passover, we need to get right with we need Amen. to get right with God. Amen. We need to do what God has told us to do so we get all these things out of the way because it's hindering the anointing and the calling. That's all that sin was put in place for. That's all that the devil was trying to do. The devil has no real power. What is the power of Satan? To fool you. Mm -hmm. If he can get you to go contrary to God's word. word. What's the power of sin? Mm. Anybody know what the power of sin is? The law. Yeah. the law. And what is the law? It's the spoken word of God. God said don't do this. But the devil's going to say look. It's okay man you slide by with that. Nobody's going to see you do this. And the result is the devil tries to get you to break God's word so that you get yourself in trouble. That's the right. devil has no power, folks. Come on. Unless we That's, give it to him. <laughs> Unless we yeah. give it to well, him. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you what. Some of you have no problem giving him power because you want to do wrong anyway and you need an excuse. Let me step on somebody's toes today. Come on. But the end result is I love Joseph for what the ministry that he carried out. Here's a man that, that stood true. And, you know, the thing about it is, is that, and this happens to us, and it may have happened to you folks right here, the Lord gives you a dream. Now, who's the, the first people you're going to go tell? You'll either go tell your family, people you trust, people you know. You might go tell your church family. And then they look at you, and they're like, I oh, you're high-minded, ain't you? Well, you know, I'm not trying to be high-minded or anything, but this is this dream I had. What do you think about it? Well, I, I think you just need you know, to forget about that and, and get back to work kind of thing. The end result is, is that, you know, this is the kind of thing that happens, is when God chooses you, so does the devil. 
That's true. When God chooses you for a task, the devil's the, the heads up go on the devil, and he's going, look, I need to put demons in front of your way. I need to put as many obstacles in your way as I possibly can. That's what they did to Jesus. That's what they do to all of us. That's right. Jesus said, if, if I went through trouble, so will you. In fact, he said, if you don't go through trouble, you won't reign with me. You won't reign with me. Because if we suffer with him, then we will reign with him. If we're not disciplined, then we're not children of God. That's just plain and simple. We have to be disciplined by God, disciplined by the Holy Spirit, to act according to the will of the Holy Spirit. What's the discipline factor? Let's, let's get down to I, I hate I hate to just be blasé about the Word of God. What is the discipline of God? When you do wrong, the pastor says, you get a nudge. You get a little feeling on the inside. Yes, you, look, you know, the world wants to call it your conscience. Well, some of you got a dirty conscience, no matter how you, no matter what you do with it, because it, that's man, that's your soulish realm. But when the Holy Spirit, who is holy, begins to give you a nudge, He's telling you, "Don't do, don't this, do this," because there's consequences to you doing this that you don't want no part of. And this is the thing that we need to find out about. Okay, we we got this little nudge. I'm going to go over here and do this, and then when you do it, well, what happened here? How come all of a sudden now I'm in some sort of trouble? I've got some sort of problems that just cropped up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? What you didn't realize and what you're not realizing even to this point is that the Holy Spirit was holding back all those yes, troubles. They were there. That's right. They were there. That's right. It took your wrongdoing to reveal them. Mm -hmm. You gave them permission, permission. to be revealed. Because of your actions. If your actions can allow things to be revealed, things that are wrong, because you did wrong, then imagine what a right action will do. A right action will do things that will bring forth the anointing, will bring forth healing. This is why people, that, and it really, it really gets me. If you were to tell people, what's your hardest battle? And most of the time people will tell you the hardest battle that they face is... The hardest battle they did, a lot, a lot of people want to say sin. But that's not the hardest battle. There's a lot of people who know the difference between right and wrong. But one of the hardest battles that most people face is fasting. That's true. Why is fasting so important? It's got to discipline yourself. <laughs> well, why is fasting so important? What's that got to do with discipline? Oh, fasting is important because if you're... you're Dying out to yourself, you want to hear what God is wanting to tell you. Well, can't I just kind of go on a diet? That's not fasting. Fasting. Why? You Why? Gotta, when you fast, you pray. Okay, when you fast, you, you pray. The word. Some people fast, fast, excuse me, they pray every day. What's the difference between fasting and just going on a diet? You're denying yourself the, you know, the food. You love all right, food every but day. that's what a diet's all about. What's but the difference? You're also, like she was saying, also fasting you is you're praying and you know, you're praising God and giving your attention. What you're doing is the difference between fasting and dieting, folks. For some of you out there, I'll talk to the church now. The difference between fasting and dieting is, number one, dieting will never carry an anointing. Dieting started with you and it's going to end with you. You're in complete control of it. It was your decision to diet because you looked at yourself in the mirror and you said, I'm not happy what I see in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now here's the difference with fasting. Fasting is normally brought on to you by prayer and petition unto God. Amen. And God will give you an unction or a word to fast. I feel like I need to fast. Is it really feelings? No. It's an unction from the Holy Spirit right. and your flesh is reacting to his movement. You know, I like to use the old uh, story about the, the percolating coffee pot. Mm -hmm. You turn the heat up a little bit and what happens is, is that thing... What happens is that thing starts going up in your head. Well, the coffee pot, when it gets hot down here, because of convection and all that, the, the water goes up into that clear glass until it's the right color, and then you know your coffee is done. The end result is the Holy Spirit, which is down in your bowels, down in your belly, right. when you start getting emotional, when you start allowing the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come on and start getting hot because you're praying the what? The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man and or woman 
And I loved it. It's and or woman. That's not right. and man and just that's nobody right. else. That's right. It's not by yourself. It's two or more gathered together. That's where the real agreement is there. And that's where the real power is. If one casts a thousand flight, two cast how many? Ten thousand to flight. Mm -hmm. Come on, folks. Hey, I know most of you folks may not be good on that arithmetic, but anybody else can see that. What would you rather have? A dollar or a thousand dollars? A thousand dollars or ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars? I mean, even your kids have figured that one out. And that God gave it to us in a very simple equation. But when we get fasting, fasting usually comes by unction of the Holy Spirit. And it is something, so if it's unctioned by the Holy Spirit, then what is it? It's holy. Sure. Folks, catch this. If you have a movement by the Holy Spirit, if he prompts you to do something, if he prompts you to get up and go talk to somebody, guess what? He's got something for you to do. Mm -hmm. But he's going to do it through you. You ain't really doing nothing. No. All you're doing is carrying him over there so that he can fulfill the function that he wants to convey to that person. Right. Now that person's already been crying out to him. Unbeknownst to you, they've been crying out to God, Oh God, oh God, I need a word, I need a word. What I need is a healing, but I need a word to encourage me because I'm, I'm losing the battle here. That's it. My emotions are like the waves of the sea. I keep trying to push them back, but they keep coming to me. Well, number one, you haven't taken authority over them. You just keep trying to push them back. And you can't do that because that's something you're trying to do in your flesh. That's kind of like dieting. And the result is, is when you get in the unction of the Holy Spirit, and you begin to pray through. See, that's something we don't know nothing about no more. How many folks pray through? You ever get in the Holy Spirit and you're sitting there and you, I mean, you, it may be like plowing fresh ground. I mean, you, you're having a hard time keeping it. You're having a hard time with the tempo. You're having a, you get every distraction in the world. I'm going to tell you, but if you're a smart prayer warrior, you're going to use the principles of prayer. If you're in a warfare situation, and I don't think there's anybody here that served up besides me, and, and of course Brian is in the other room, but you know you're going to go and do some intel about where you're at, logistically speaking. Let me see where I'm at. Let me see where the enemy is at. Let me see where I'm at. Let's see if I'm in a safe place or if I put myself in a bad place. Let me take the high ground if I can. But do I have cover? Do, do I, do, am I going to be outflanked? That kind of, those are all the things you consider. Well, guess what? You need to consider that even while you're fighting, not flesh and blood, but while you're fighting principalities and powers Amen. and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness, whether they're in the heavenlies, whether they've got the high ground, or whether they're down here in the low ground. Because God's given you authority over them. That's one of the things. Your confidence is a weapon of your warfare. Your confidence is a weapon of your warfare. Timidity will keep you back where confidence will Amen. give you the power to do things Amen. that you didn't think you could do. I'm going to stand up and talk to this woman. I don't know what she needs. Mm. And I may be looking like a fool here in just a minute, but I'd rather be a fool for Jesus and get it wrong than sit there and deny the Holy Spirit the opportunity to testify to this woman who may, you don't know what he's going to do. Mm. Out of that encouragement, her healing's on the way. God. Because it starts with an unction of the Holy Spirit that makes it holy. You know what I like about Joseph, and I'll get back to Joseph, because he's really the, 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 the message here this morning. He was the message that came out of my sister's mouth this morning. Mm -hmm. The message that came out of your mouth this morning. It's the message of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because Joseph was filled with the Holy Spirit and with the essence of Jesus Christ. Because the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ are like this. They're just together. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know what capacity he knew about the Lord, but I'm going to tell you, just by the way the man acted, you knew that he was filled full of faith and full of the Spirit of the Lord. You know, you got a whole nation of people. Jesus Christ hadn't come yet, hadn't been to the cross, they just came out of 430 years of bondage, yet you got two guys that'll stand up in the middle of it and stand for the Lord. Amen. You got Caleb and you got Joshua, which is the English way to say the word Jesus. Jesus is a um, amalgamation of not only um, um, a Greek, but a Latin, mm -hmm. and that's where Jesus comes from, or Jesus. But the end result is, is that, uh, you know, when you sit there and you look at these two guys that didn't know Jesus Christ on the cross, yet they were filled with the Spirit of the living God mm -hmm. in such a way that they said, surely we can take this. Mm -hmm. 
Surely God has given us the strength to take this. What did they base it on? They based it on the fact that they just came through battles. Amen. They saw what God did for them. I they did. saw what God was continuing to do for them. They saw that 40 years that their feet didn't get saw, sore. Their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. They didn't go hungry. They didn't lack bread or water. They, right. had, they had protection from the sun, but cloud by day. Right. And by night, they had a nightlight. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Called the Holy Spirit in a pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of us in our minds would say, if you see a pillar of fire outside your house every night, wouldn't you feel pretty confident the Lord's with you? <laughs> it's a physical manifestation, and you should be going, yeah, I feel pretty good. Bring, the giant, bring that giant on. But when you don't see those kind of manifestations, but you still have the heart of David on the inside That's of you, right. that kid that came out from the field, you know what? This kid was so ignored when all the sons of Jesse were called to be to be interviewed That's right. by the prophet Samuel. Every one of them was there except for David. David. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Why would you leave one of the... And I want to bring this to your attention. Did Jesse obey the word of God through the prophet Samuel? I want you to think about it for a minute. What did Samuel tell him? Bring your sons. Mm -hmm. He didn't say leave any of them behind. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, well, I just want the big, tall, good-looking guys, not the little shrimpy guys. I want the oldest ones, not the youngest ones. I want the ones who you think have the anointing and can carry the, carry the, uh, the authority and that look of king. That's all according to the flesh. Isn't that what the prophet said to him? You know, we're not judging by the flesh here. You're judging by the flesh, but we're not going to judge by the flesh here. We're going to do it by the Spirit of the living God. So, let me bring something to your attention. I've never heard it preached. I'm getting that download from the cloud. And what I'm hearing God say is this, is when we're disobedient to the Word of God, chances are we'll miss what God said. God called all His sons. Where was David? Who's in the field? Still in the field. Mm -hmm. Well, this would have been a perfect time for the prophet to have rebu rebuked Jesse. Well, sir, aren't you disobedient to the word of God? Didn't I tell you to bring all your sons? But God had compassion. And there's, there's a point here. When God tells you something, go do it. Amen. Don't shortcut it. Don't say, well, I'll do this much and then I won't do the rest of it. Because the end result is, is if you shortcut it, what you're doing is you're hindering the Holy Spirit from the next great work of God in your life. Amen. So don't do oh, it. my God. When you get that unction, when you get the nudge, go ahead and say, Lord, I'm going to step out here on faith and obedience. Because when you have faithful obedience, it brings confidence. Hallelujah. You know what? We can say what we want to say about Peter. He was a big, dumb guy, and I'm going to give you that. He was. He said a lot of things he got rebuked for. He opened his mouth, and sure enough, he got rebuked as soon as the words came out of his mouth. But he was the guy that stepped out of the boat. He sure did. He was the guy that ended up leading 3,000 yes, men to, to a, a salvation experience in the upper room. Yes, he he was the guy. Hallelujah. He was the guy that got, a, that got fully anointed with the Holy Spirit. Now, what if somebody come up there and say, hey, wait a minute. Isn't this the guy that denied Christ three times? Isn't this the guy that said, oh Lord, I'll go to the cross for you? What a big mouth this guy is. Mm -hmm. he, this guy is just full of himself. Guess what? God will use a guy who's still full of himself. Yes, he will. He'll bring him to a place where he'll break down. So long as he has a heart for God, God will bring you to a place where you'll break down and cry and surrender all. Amen. Till it gets to the point where, you know what? And I'm going to talk, talk to you pastors today, right out there. When Peter was coming out of the temple, and I, I, the Beit HaMikdash, the house of God, not the temple. Temples are for pagans. Amen. Thank you. The house, the house of, of God. God. When he's coming out of the house of God, he wasn't paying attention to these people out here. 
He wasn't sitting there going, oh, let me pray for your sister and taking a photo op while he was doing it. <laughs> Come on. I love it. Some of you seminaries, uh, your cemeteries, have whole classes on how to stand in front of the camera. How worldly is that? I see it. Because you want to look good. That's all flesh. You yeah. need to get out of that. In fact, you need to get out of that cemetery. Because all they're doing is creating dead folks. It's like Frankenstein. <laughs> Telling you now. Let me get hard. Let me step on your toes. I love it. You stick your foot out there. Let me get it. Because I sure will. Hallelujah. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to give you what the Lord told me yes. to say. Yes, amen. I'm not here to be your buddy. Praise I'm not here to join your congregation. <laughs> I'm not here to join your <coughs> league of congregations. I am here to tell you what the Word of God says concerning any given situation right now. Hallelujah. And you know, where we were, we were talking about Joseph and what he went through. And I'm going to tell you what, there's not many of you out there that would, that would stand up like Joseph and David did. Some of you would just ball and squall being out there because you got left out. But this was the kid, talking about David, this was the kid when the bear came out of the bush, he fought the bear. Yes, he did. When the lion came out, I don't care how big that lion was. He protected the sheep. Or how small he was. This is a kid that grabbed a hold of the beard of the lion and pulled his mouth open and took the sheep out of his mouth. That's right. Okay? Come on. Come on. What sermon have you ever preached that pulled people out of the mouth of the devil. Oh my God, preach it. Come on. What sermon have you ever preached? Where you had the heart of David. Where you could look into the very eyes of the devil, pull him by the beard, pull his mouth open, and grab hold of that unsaved person and pull him out. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you know what you've got to contend with when you do that. Now it's just you and him. Hallelujah. But because you're so many times I see in these revivals and stuff, you're trying to do it in your own flesh, and flesh will get you nothing but a photo op. That's true. It's as deep as a piece of paper. That's as far as it, that's just as deep as it is. Hallelujah. Many of you are out there, but guess what? It's up to you now. Reach it. Many of you are out there using the anointing of God to your own benefit. That's true. You don't care nothing about growing the kingdom. All you want to do is grow your pocketbook. Your sermon mammon. And I'm telling you what. When you get there and you have to stand before God. He'll judge you for it. I'm not judging you. I can't judge you. But I'm going to tell you about it. That you might repent before you get there. What was the ministry of John the Baptist? Repent. For the kingdom of God That's is true. at hand. Yes. What was the ministry of Jesus Christ when he got here? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. What should your ministry be today? Repent. Not how much money can you give me. Repent, because the kingdom of God is here today, and it's coming soon. Hallelujah. There are some events coming not very far from now. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe Hallelujah. It. I believe it. Lord spoke to me the other day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord spoke to me the other day and he said, you know, there's a reason why things didn't happen the way that y'all did. Y'all thought it would. Some of you were waiting for those things to happen this year. But the Lord reminded me of something. He said, had it happened, you'd all been left behind. Oh my God. Every, every single one of you. Every single person that looked at me and said, well, why do you think it didn't happen? I said, well, it's because it's in God's timing, not mine. I'm fallible. I've to always told you that. But the end result is, is none of you change getting ready for the Lord. If this is anything that John said, if this is anything that Jesus said, this is anything that the apostles said, this is anything that the, uh, uh, certainly Paul said it. You're going to have to make some changes if you're getting ready for Jesus Christ and you want to go with him. You're going to have to make some changes. And the way you conduct business in your family, start there first, please. That's true. Some of you folks are making a mistress out of your ministry. Hmm. Yeah, so let that sink in for a moment. You made a mistress out of your ministry. Mm -hmm. Notice I didn't say harlot. 
but I was I was thinking it. God. Come on. Come on. God, family, and then church. Hallelujah. You hide things in your ministry that you don't want the world to know about. <laughs> Come on. Come on. True. Some of you need to some of you just say, Help me, Jesus. Some of you need to say, Help me, Jesus. Because you've done some things and you used your ministry as a tool to hide what you did. There's a coming a time and a time is now for repentance to come in the earth. Because as you repent, God is going to bring you to an anointing and to a place you've never been before. That's having the same kind of revelation that David had concerning Jesus Christ being on the, floor, on, on the cross. Some of you have never had a real revelation of Jesus Christ. This is why you never take the Lord's Supper. This is why you never take the elements. This is why you never, you, unless it's in a public gathering where someone can see you, you don't do it at home. In fact, when you're at home, you're a completely different person when you're out in the world Amen. and somebody can see you. Amen. Come on, I'm talking to somebody out Amen. here. That's when you're at home, and you have nobody looking around, you're on the porno channel. Hmm. You're watching all that stuff. I, you spend more time watching sports yep. than you do in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Than you do talking to God. In fact, you do more time in sports than you do talking to your own family. You know, I said before that some of you have made a mistress out of your ministry. Because what you've done is the nature of your ministry is that Jesus Christ should only be first. But what you've done is you've used your ministry for yourself. You use it as a way, as a gambling tool to get things that you want. And Jesus Christ is nowhere in it. Nowhere in it. But that too will be judged. Now am I judging? I can't. But I'm going to tell you because I don't have a choice. If I don't tell you, I don't want it being on me. I don't want it being on me. So the end result is, let me say it, if you hate me, I don't lose a thing. But the love of the Father in me is to tell you so that you might get out of some of the things you're in. And some of you will listen, and some of you are going to poo-poo. Who are you to tell me? I hear you, boy, I hear you. You never heard it out of your mouth, I heard it in your heart. Who are you to tell me? Well, I'm nobody. I'm struggling all, all that I can to come to the high calling of servant. Amen. You can keep whatever platitude and gratitude you got. Don't care. Don't care nothing for it. But if we've had the heart of Joseph, if we had the heart of Caleb, if we had the heart of Joshua, My God. hallelujah, if we had the heart of David, mm. those are the men that have a heart for God, that have a heart for Jesus Christ. Even though they did not know him as far as the cross is concerned, yet they had a better idea of him than you have. Which one of you has had such a deep revelation of Jesus Christ on the cross that you knew that they were going to cast lots for his garment? I want to meet you. I want you. I want to meet you. Hallelujah. He knew exactly what kind of, kind of condition his body was in. In fact, he was sick at the time himself. Because you don't have revelations like this and not feel it in your physical being. You, don't, you can't do this and not have it touch your heart, your mind, your physical body. You're going to feel it. Because the Holy Spirit is going to come on you and he's going to demand of you everything. But he can't force you to do it. He won't do it. But he's called you to it. And as you surrender more and more and more, just as David did, I'm going to tell you what, even though he wept on his, on his couch, as they put it in the English, he wept on his bed nightly before the Lord. Because he knew what a sad, pitiful person he was. And I know that a lot of, a lot of times that in David's condition, David's situation, his family was torn up over the sin that he committed. The curses that we allow into our lives. Many, many, many people today can't figure out why their, why their, why their families are just, I mean, it's just terrible. I'm telling you. They're going through all kinds of tragedy. 
But I'm telling you, it's because of some of the things that you yourself have done. You've allowed things, you've said things, and you've allowed these things to happen. And many of you, you know, as you've been chosen by the Lord, the enemy came against you, you didn't know how to fight, or you chose not to fight. Many of you sit on your hands. You do just like Adam did. Nothing. His wife was sitting there talking to the devil. And what did he do? Nothing. He didn't, he didn't turn around and say, shut that mouth. He didn't go over there and break the snake's neck. He didn't do anything. He just let it go on and then had the audacity to turn right around and join in. Many of you men are out there out like just like that, and you wonder preach why your families wonder why your families are God, falling preach apart. It, preach it. You wonder why your families are falling, falling apart. And I'm not just talking about in the world. In fact, in many cases, they're in better shape than you are in the church. Come on now, preach it. Because they're not under the attack. That's right. You asked, oh, how can that be? I heard you. Because they're not under the same attack. If you're not going to defend yourself and your house, your family. And defend the house of God. Then there's really not a whole lot that the Lord's going to do for you. Because you have to rely on somebody else to do it for you. You have a sickness. It's called complacency. Wow. And you need to grab hold of the spirit of complacency. And bind it and cast it into the abyss. Go look at Luke 27 through 39. Go look what Jesus did to the madman of Gadara. Yes. The Gadarene. Right. Go look at what he did. That man was in the occult. He had allowed the devil to literally overtake his life. This was not a man who was just having a hard time. He literally lost control. I'm telling you, some of you folks out there right now have lost control. The devil's in control of your lives. And I'm talking about saved folks. Yes. You have given yourself over in such a way that the devil's the one that's, that's calling all the shots. And all you can do is cry, help me, Jesus. And every time you try to get out of the hole you're in, such an attack comes against you uh -huh. that you immediately back up. Because he knows your Still flesh. Shaking authority. That's me. right. My God. The word of God comes out of your mouth and you immediately regret it. Come on. It's time to be like Joseph. Yes. Hallelujah. It's time to be like David. David was a... Now I'm telling you, you guys are in this place. You guys are in this situation. I'm not making this up. God is speaking to you right now. David was an anointed by God to be king. And the very next thing he was doing is running for his life. That's right. The guy that God rejected grabbed a spear and tried to kill him and pin him to a wall. That's right. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, many of you are in that situation right now because you, ha you, you chose not to fight and now you're in a fight that you don't know what to do with. So what should we do? Number one, the first thing you want to do is repent. You want to repent of your timidity. Mm -hmm. You want to repent of those things you have not done though God called you with signs and wonders to do them. What did the children of Israel... I mean, God said, look, I, I, what's wrong with you folks? Here I am, I have brought you out of Mitzrayim, Egypt. I brought you out of the house of bondage and of slavery. Showed you great and mighty works. I even opened up the Red Sea. Walked through it on dry ground. Nobody has ever seen that before. What such a great people, the, the, the nations around Egypt were going. We feared that you people were coming. When they got to the promised land, that's what they heard. Rahab the harlot. We know that the Lord has given you the land. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what she said. We know that the Lord has given you the land and the terror and the fear of you. Well, let me just tell you. She might have been afraid of you, but the devil ain't. That's right. The devil ain't because he knows exactly where you live. Mm -hmm. He knows how to, right, how to get around how to you. get on your heart. How to That's it. Deceive you. Because I'm going to tell you, when you're done getting your heart cleaned up and getting your getting your armor on, who's he going to attack? He's going to attack anybody you love. That's right. He's going to come after your family. That's this right. is why if you're not, fellas, listen to me now. If you're not protecting your family, let me say it with no misunderstanding. You're a fool. Mm -hmm. You're foolish. 
If you're not protecting your, your loved ones, if you're not protecting your mom, your dad, your kids, your daughters, your husbands, your, your wives, loved ones, I'm going to tell you what, in some cases, your relatives are your bitter enemies, and the devil has set it up that way. That's right. I'm going to tell you what, you need to pray for them all the more. Come on. As you begin to pray for them, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to break down those walls. And I'm not, it's not going to happen overnight either. But as you get better at the warfare of God, as you get better dealing with it, because you're not wrestling against flesh here. So when they call you a dirty something, knowing so-and-so, you know what? Bless them anyway. Do what Jesus did. Jesus should have cursed all those folks that they were sitting there looking at the cross on the cross. They were making fun of them. They were jeering them, making jokes about them. Come down off the cross, prophesy. You did this for this one and this for this one. Come down off there and we'll believe you then. You ain't no different. But you need to get different. You need to repent of that kind of attitude. And you need to sit there and grab hold of the word of God. And in the quiet hour when there ain't nobody looking because you're timid about it anyway. Why don't you go ahead and pray. Lord give me strength. Mm -hmm. Lord give me the heart of David. Amen. Hallelujah. Who wasn't fearful. Even though he challenged by a bear. Now that might be the little black bears. They're only 300 pounds. Anybody here handle that right? You got a 300 pound mad animal trying to kill your sheep, and you're going to, what are you first thing you're going to do? First thing you're going to do is run. All right. But I'm going to tell you what, David didn't run away from it, he ran to it. Mm -hmm. And God gave him the strength to overcome the bear, and he gave him the strength to overcome the lion, and he gave him the strength to overcome Saul, and he gave him the strength to overcome the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. But most of all, you know what God gave David the strength to overcome? Overcome David. That's true. It was David's biggest challenge. Bathsheba was the one that hurt him the most. Why? Because he allowed it. He's the one. I see that woman over there. And something formed up on the inside of him. He got a little bit of the big head. Well, I'm king now. And she's a good looking woman. Whoa, she's married to a Hittite. Well, he's not even a Jew. In fact, he's probably emasculated. I know that for a fact because the scripture tells us in the Aramaic that he treated her like a daughter, not like a wife. Even though they were married legally, he could not have sexual relationship with her because he was emasculated. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Wow. So the end result is what did David do? David sent, David sent him with malice of forethought into the battle with the idea that he'd be killed. Well, was Bathsheba already pregnant? Did he already break the law? Did he already allow the devil to overcome him? Yeah. I think all those things are true. But whether they're true or not is, a, is immaterial. The end result is we know what happened to that child. That child died. I tell, fellas, listen to me. Especially in families. It's going to cost you. Some of you have lost loved ones because of the sins that you've committed. Amen. And I'm not just talking about your children. Some of you have lost loved ones. This is the reality of life. But I'm going to tell you what, we can break that spirit of death. You can break that spirit of death by repenting and getting before God to God, oh Lord, forgive me. Mm -hmm. Don't let it fester like David did. Now this is what I'm going to get on David about. Because he let it grow up. And Absalom might have killed him. Go ahead. Why do you think um, the child died? Why do I think he died? Because of the sin of David. Because I was thinking in terms of that, maybe because he killed Uriah, that's why he died. Life for a life. Yeah. Remember, what the, remember how the law was. Mm -hmm. That God would demand from you the very thing that you did. That's exactly right. Yeah. Eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a life for a life. Mm -hmm. This is how it worked. God was, you know, God was, now God was just in doing that. But David, David's problem was this. Mm -hmm. David's problem was, why didn't you take me? Many of you guys are out there saying, why didn't you take me? Mm -hmm. But what was God's promise to David several years mm -hmm. before that? That he would establish his throne forever. Mm -hmm. 
and that there would never be a time that there was not a descendant of David on the throne of Israel. In fact, let me say, let me go on a little farther. Let me tell you how strong the blessing of God is on your family line if you'll let it. You remember a man named Hezekiah? Deathly ill. He turned his face to the wall because he was going to die. He said, Lord, I don't want to die. Just like any man would do. I don't want to die, Lord. I don't want to die. I don't want to get I, I, I don't want I don't want this thing to happen to me and take me out. Let me ask you something. When he came through this sickness, and God asked him, What do you want me to do? As a sign. Well, the sun went back. Rather than coming across the sky, it went back ten steps, which I don't know how many degrees that is, ten degrees or whatever. And God gave him 15 more years. Why did God do that for Hezekiah? He repented. He, did, he repented. Mm -hmm. will, God, will God do that for you? Remember what God did for, for David. Why did God do that for Hezekiah? Now we're going to do a little teaching here now. The end result is when we look at the prophetic line of David and the promises of God, which are what? Yes and Without amen. and repentance. There's no repentance in the promise of God. They're yes and amen mm -hmm. to the glory of God. They're never yes and no. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, is Hezekiah was given 15 more years because God's word stands. There will always be a descendant of David on the throne of Israel. Okay. And God spared his life because of God's own word. Will God spare your life because of God's own word if you'll repent? Turn your face to the wall. Turn your face to the word of God. And go ahead and repent and watch God do a miracle because God's got a covenant concerning you. Just like he did with David. But I'm going to tell you, the covenant with you is better than the covenant he had with David. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Don't sit there and say, well, that was because if David was a special man, he was special to God's own heart. Hallelujah. He was. But the end result is, so are we. We are in the line of David. We are in the line of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, that God has a special covenant with us. And I'm going to tell you, when we figure out who we are in God, that we're beginning to get ourselves right, I'm going to tell you, the devil's going to run. He's got to run. Because he has no other power but to side, try to get us sidetracked in the Word of God. Amen. But if we'll follow the Word of God rather than following our flesh, if David had only listened to the Word of God, Uriah was going to die anyway. Was Bathsheba the son of Solomon? Excuse me, the uh, English. The mother of Solomon? Yeah. So the promise was there. But the man of God couldn't wait. Go ahead. But wasn't David supposed to be at war because he's the king? He was supposed to be with the, the people in the battle? He could have been, but that's not always true. Oh. If it's not a big battle, there's no reason for the king to go. Huh? Yeah, you just, hey, I'm going to send out 30,000 men. Yeah. Guys, bring back the good report. Because what happens is, is the king and the priest and the prophet, they go before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Should we go up, Lord, or not? If you're going up at a presumption because I think I can whip this guy, I'm going to tell you what, you're, a bad, you're in a bad place. Uh, that's flesh speaking. But they went up and you repent before God and you get, you get down before God and say, Lord, should we go up? It is your will, right. your desire your, that we yes, go up. Will yes. the Holy Spirit go with us? Your presence go with us or not? Because I don't want to go up there and fight these people even if they're half our strength. I always pray. Exactly. You're entering into warfare. I, I'm going to tell you what, this is, really, this is really a lot of you guys are right here. You're entering into spiritual warfare. You don't pray. You haven't taken the Lord's Supper right. in, in a year. And some of you, I want to tell you, you haven't taken it in years. That's right. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord just reminded me, some of you have said you won't take it. Ooh. Because you might accidentally... Uh, ingest a damnation. Oh my God! You need to get out. That's thinking, thinking, and you need to get out of that. Mm -mm. The Lord just spoke to me about that. I'm like, I don't know who you are, mm -mm. but it's a teaching among some of you. 
And you need to stop that. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is from the devil, That's and right. you need to get rid of it. That's right. That is not the Word of God. The Word of God, He has made it for us that we might bring our sins, sickness, and diseases before Him. Amen. He said, bring it, Amen. and I'll give you a revelation about who I am. Amen. I'll give you a revelation about what you should be praying. Mm -hmm. I'll give you about revelation about the Holy Spirit and what He's going to do through you. Hallelujah. This is what, this is what we do it every week, folks. You've been here for any length of time. You know that we break the bread every week. Every and I'm going to tell you what. Right. And I've really watched it grow up in people while I've been here. I've watched it grow up in pastor. I've watched it grow up in myself. Certainly watched it grow up in my sister. Watched it grow up in my brother there. And other folks that have been in and out of here. I have watched the anointing of God come on them and produce in them. Hallelujah. A powerful, powerful, powerful move of God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is not this is not my doing. Mm -mm. I can't make you do right, and I sure ain't gonna make you do wrong. Mm -mm -mm. But when the Holy Spirit comes on you, I'm gonna tell you what. I can bring up the times. <laughs> Hallelujah. One woman standing right here. I saw the anointing of God come on her when she began to preach. Uh, the, the, the little podium over here, and she, she was kind of timid about the whole thing, but she got over here, and she grabbed all that microphone, and she began to talk, and I'm going to tell you what, as she began to talk, you could see the Holy Spirit come on her. I mean, it was physical. I, and my eyes didn't have any problem seeing it, brother. And it came on her, and as it came on her, you could see her face change, and her voice change, and be, she began to speak the Word of God. I mean boldly. Hallelujah. And as she was talking, I know that the people that she was praying about, I know that there was something going on in their lives. Amen. There was something going on. Just like that woman that you prayed for on Thursday, Yes. there's something going on in her life right now. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit just doesn't do things because he no, got nothing else to do. Not. He said, let me get my daughter over there because I know I can trust her. Because if I tell her to get up and go over and do something, she'll get up and she'll go over and do it. And as she begins to do that, it's not her speaking, but it's me speaking through her. Yes. And I, I begin to speak, and that woman that accepts it in faith. Yes. Guess what? There's a miracle yes. that gets born in that very yes. second right there, and something's about to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm waiting for the good report. Amen. I don't know when it's going to happen because I wasn't there. But I'm going to tell you, I'm excited about what I heard. I don't know about you, but do you get excited when you read the Word of God? Did you, did you put yourself in there and say, you know what, that could happen to me. That could happen to me. I could be like Peter, walking down the street, people just getting healed. Amen. People, and, but I'm, you know what, I'm going to keep my eyes away from it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to touch the glory of God and do a photo op. That's right. And start preaching about how great I am. Oh, come to this revival because it's about me. Uh-uh. It's about him and it's always about him. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, folks, let me say something to you. Yeah, and, and, and I get I get a little bit frustrated with you, but I've seen it, and, it, and it's just common demand, so I, I shouldn't be frustrated at all with it. If the mighty miracles of God are working through you because you've become a servant of God, you don't need to tout your own name. I guarantee you everyone will know who you are. Praise God. Amen. Because you have become known as a servant of God. You'll become known as someone who knows Jesus and that Jesus Christ is working through you. You don't need to sit out there and start putting out press releases and this one and make yourself famous. In fact, I want to tell you this. I think you're hurting yourself by doing that. Amen. You're actually limiting the ability of God to use you. You know, one of the things that Jesus always said when he was doing miracles is he said, Shh, don't tell nobody. Of course, some of them just couldn't keep the mouth shut anyway. And they went out and broadcast all over the place. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that by them trying to make him famous, they would also try to make him what? Mm. Would they try to make Jesus? Now, they tried to do it a couple of different times. They wanted to make him king. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make him king, but that was not in the will of the Father. He came as a servant. Now, bearing in mind, he was going to be king. Sir. He's going to come back as king. Hallelujah. Yes, but at first, he needs to come as a servant. Did you pick up on it, folks? Amen. Did you get it? I got did it, it. Did it go on the inside? Mm -hmm. You come as a servant. And when you come back, you'll also be a king. Amen. 
If you'll do what he did, if you'll live this life right now as a servant of God, yes. you'll come back as a king along with him. He's king of kings. And Lord of lords. The Lord of lords. We're not talking about the kings of this present age. We're no. not talking about no. mighty men over in England and no. this one and that one and whoever. And, and royal families that, come, that were made that way by men. No. We're talking about people who are established by God. They're living this life right now as if they were a servant. But as the Lord God changes them and remolds them, and they may have to die, but when they're coming back, they're coming back as kings. In a kingdom of priests. So they're kings and priests, just like Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ is. I see it. And they're, they're outfitted in such a way that they are fulfilling their priestly function with kingly authority. What authority are they doing it in? The same authority as the king of kings is. But if you've got faith, even like a mustard seed, you're doing that today. Amen. You're doing it today. You're getting a hold of the vision of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And you're saying, you know what? If I can aspire to the high calling of servant, that I know that in some day, some way, some form, some shape, I'm coming back as a king. Not because it's going to do anything for me, but rather... I will have been completely outfitted by my father to be exactly what my brother is. I'll be a priest and a king. I'll be able to pray in ways that I only wish I could now. I'll be able to exert the authority of the Lord in a way that I only wish I could now. But as I begin to walk in the warfare, you know what? Our warfare is not carnal, folks. It ain't about me touting me. Hallelujah. Rather than let me lift up the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Let me lift him up. And if I lift him up, guess what? I'm aspiring to be servant. Hallelujah. Because when I become a servant, when I'm, I'm, I'm working at it. But when I reach that high calling, hallelujah. I, and I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. And I may be wrong, Lord. You can keep your apostleship. <laughs> You can you can keep your your you know whatever you are your evangelistic whatever association you you can keep your 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 pastorate you can keep your bishopric you can keep all that stuff. All I'm asking is, Lord, you didn't come in those things. Why should I? You didn't come to make yourself some big great name. You could have been king several times, but you chose not to. You could have called for twelve legions of angels. Why you were on the cross, but you chose not to. Amen. You th for I mean, any way, shape, or form, do you yeah. think that he could not have got himself off the oh, cross? Yes, amen. I mean, come on, folks. That's this right. is the man who walked on water. Preach come on it. now. Preach it. Preach it. Who do you think you're dealing with? Preach it. He was a man who walked on water. He was a man. He was a man. I mean, the, the man was blind. In fact, he wasn't just blind. He was born without eye sockets. Mm. I mean, there was nothing there at all. That's right. So we have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, spits on the ground. How do I know that's a real thing? You know that in the Mishnah today, it is illegal, according to the rabbis, for you to spit on the ground and make mud on the Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. It's illegal today. That's one of the things. That got on me. I said, it must be a true statement. They would not have gotten out of their way to go ahead and say this and write this if this were not a true statement. But he went ahead and put mud on the man's eyes. Mm -hmm. Told him to go wash the pool of Siloam. And he went and did so in obedience to the Lord and came back and said, what do you see? And now we've got to laugh at this. He said, I see men walking around like trees. I said, whoa, whoa, stop right there. What do you know what a tree looks like? You ever seen a tree? Oh, you didn't even God. have eyeballs until just a moment ago. I never thought about that, but that's the truth. See, this is where we have we have people who write things into the scripture in order to clarify our understanding because we're all stupid according to them. Mm -hmm. But somebody added that. That's that's not an original text. I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, I see men walking around like trees. Okay. You know what a tree looks like? <laughs> we're blind up at this point, how do you know? It. 
But the end result is that he goes back and he washes a second time because everything is established by two or three witnesses. Two to three witnesses. Come on. So let's look at that for just a second. I'm going to sidetrack for just a second. I'm going to do what Dad Hagen has often done. I'm going to do a rabbit trail. Why, in this particular healing, did he tell him to go back and wash again? A second time. We know that the Lord established it as something to be done. But how come we don't see it in other healings? Hmm. Should make you wonder. Why don't we see the Lord saying, okay, well, go ahead and do this part, and then come back and do this part? I want to tell you that there's prerequisites to your healing. And if they're not done, then you'll go back a second time. Because a lot of times, the prerequisite to healing is prayer and fasting. fasting. And a lot of folks, and it's unfortunate, folks, that the Lord has to put you in such a, such a hard time. I mean, you've got, I mean, your bitterness of soul. Because you won't pray any other way. You won't do it on your own. You'll find every excuse not to do it. So when he puts you in this position, mm. then you're there and you're going, what shall I do now? Mm. And now, you, now you're crying out to the Lord. And to such a point that, I mean, it's almost uncontrollable. Mm. But you did it to yourself. He, he's not sitting there trying to hurt you. But he can't deal with you any other way. And I'm speaking to some of you folks specifically. But if you'll make it a lifestyle to grab hold of the Word of Amen. God and grow, go ahead and fast, go ahead and pray. And, and I mean, you may be like a little kid and don't know much about the English language. Start you know, off, you blah, 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 blah. You may be the way you start out. But the end result is when you do that, guess what? He shows up. All you have to do is start. He'll show up. And as he begins to show up, as you begin to even remind him of what he did for David, remind him of what he did for Joshua and Caleb, mm -hmm. 80 years old, mm -hmm. 80 years old, still had strength, mm -hmm. still driving their old truck, <laughs> still, <laughs> 85 years old, still got the strength that God gave them when they were in their 40s, come on, we see that today? Let me point her out. Let me point her out. I'm telling you. I don't have to search some far country to see the miracles of God. All I have to do is look right here. And I see the miracle of God. Amen. All I have to do is come to the house of God and I'll see the miracles of God. I've seen the miracles of God in this place. I've seen the Holy Spirit begin to interpret and to, and to give unction uh, out of folks that didn't even know the language and yet was speaking a, per a perfect language they, they had never spoken before. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. These are the things Amen. that we need to look forward to. We need to encourage ourselves in the things of God. And if we have our problems with it, ask God for encouragement. Lord God, encourage me in this so that I can get up and move out boldly approaching the throne of grace when I'm in time of need. If you're not approaching the throne of grace, are you confident that God is hearing you? Is that the problem? Are you confident that God is listening to your voice? Have you taken all the offenses out of the way? Mm -hmm. This is why we take the Lord's Supper. This is why we celebrate the Passover. The Lord said, Therefore, celebrate the Passover because Christ, your, your Passover, Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. That's what we do. That's We're right. here celebrating him as our Passover lamb, That's the it. one who takes away the sin of the world. Yes. This is not the Passover lamb back in Mitzrayim, no. Egypt. No. This is the Passover lamb for the church today. This is why we've broken away from some old traditions that were traditions of men. But we've gravitated to the word of God in 1 Corinthians 5. And we saw what God said. And we grabbed hold of it with a whole heart and fullness of faith. And we began to walk in it. And as we walked in it, guess what? Every time we broke the bread, revelation began. <laughs> amen, amen. Every time we broke the bread, God, revelation God, came God. on. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you. 
we, we don't know yet what God's about to do. But it's coming. Yes, it is. It's coming, and he's going to give us revelation. Because he said to us, surely, by his word, I do nothing, but I first reveal it to my servants yes, and the prophets. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Mm -mm. He's also it. said that even the deep things of God shall be revealed unto us by his spirit. Mm -hmm. Your eye may or may not have seen, and your ear may not have heard. The spirit. Neither has it entered into your heart, that inside of you, soulless realm. But God hath revealed it unto us by His Spirit. Do you know that's a prophetic tense? I want to stop there just for a second. Do you know it's a prophetic tense? Because He just says a negative. Your eye didn't see it. Your ear didn't hear it. It didn't even enter. It didn't enter your mind. Yet God hath revealed it. Well, I, I, I don't know what he's talking about. God didn't reveal it to me. It is a prophetic tense. And a prophetic tense says something as if, as if, even though it's future, he says it as if it's already happened. That's how sure God is about his word. Amen. He says it's his word come to pass. in a prophetic tense that... No, that, 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 that is going to come to pass. That in God's economy, it's already come to pass. Right. The only one that's stopping it is you. This is why, in, a, in many, many ways, as we, as we're, oh, well, you know, that revelation is, is, a, is, a, is a ways off, or this, or that, or the other thing. No, it's not. When David saw Jesus on the cross, he saw him as if he were there right now. He saw him on the cross. He gave explanation of Jesus on the cross that were exact. Amen. Exact. That's how close. And I'm going to tell you what. God is not going to do something for David that he's not going to do for us. Yes. Because what does it say concerning John? We talk about John the Baptist. What does it say concerning John? There was none born greater than John of women. There's none born greater than of from women than John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. But yet the least in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is greater than John. Why? Mm -hmm. Because of the Holy Spirit. If you're allowing the Holy Spirit, the God in you, to really manifest himself through you, to manifest himself in your life, hallelujah, then you're going to begin to speak prophetically. Mm -hmm. Even if it's in the secret place, you're going to know it's for pro Amen. prophetic utterance. Amen. You're going to begin to get a boldness about you and go, wait a minute, I'm speaking the word of God here. Yes. I know it's the word yeah. of God, it's not mine. Mm -hmm. And as I begin to speak it, as I begin to prophesy it, what is that prophecy? Prophesy, that tense is, I'm going to speak it out as if it's something that's going to happen, but I'm so sure it's going to happen as if, for, as if I'm looking in the, in the rear view mirror. Like it's already done. Do you speak like that? When God gives you something, do you speak it as if it's already happened? That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, Lord, forgive me for that. Hallelujah. It's as if it's already happened. That's right. That's a prophetic tense. God says that we, the Holy Spirit only speaks in the prophetic tense. He only speaks in the holy tense. He never speaks in a blasphemous tense. He only speaks in the holy tense and he only speaks in a prophetic tense. God speaks his word as if it's already happened. Now that's faith. What did he say to us? When you're praying, believe you've received it as you pray. And it's yours. Amen. Thank you. Do right, you want me to close or you want to close, Pastor? We want to thank you for being with us here at Trinity Kingdom Connection. Remember, this is the ongoing ministry of Jesus Christ in the earth. This is not our testimony. This is the testimony of Jesus Christ working in his people. Hallelujah. And we invite you back every Saturday at 12-ish. Give, give or take a few minutes. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, blessings, blessings, blessings are, are just, just falling down like rain around here. So join us every Shabbat. Join us every Saturday. And if, you're, if you've been challenged by what I've said today, let me know. 
That's right. Give us a call. Whether 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 you your agreement or whether you hate my guts, let us know. Yeah. Let us agree together. Ask questions. That we can go ahead and begin to find out what the truth of God is. That's right. As we begin to do this, I'm going to tell you what. We'll break down some barriers. Maybe some office. things I said offended you. But I'm going to tell you, if I said something that offended you, is there something in your life that the offense is holding on to? This is the Bible study. Come on. Come on to this Bible study. As Pastor says, we'll go ahead and, and we'll get it straightened out. No questions. But we want, to, we want you to know that we love you and that God loves you. And meet us here every Saturday, every Shabbat, and let the blessing of God shine upon you. Amen. 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 Ooh, oh, my God. Wow.